As I have mentioned many times in previous videos, my primary intention for this Monastic Musings channel is to provide positive content in line with the authentic teachings of the Second Vatican Council, as well as our Holy Father, Pope Francis. It is understandable how one might interpret the title of this video, The MAGA Mass, to be a betrayal of that intention fomenting a spirit of divisiveness rather than peaceful dialogue. However, from the outset of this channel, I have also made it my mission to provide clarity when I discover the promotion of false and misleading messages about the liturgy, which is also a major topic of this channel. Quite often, the public statements made by my Archbishop, the Most Reverend Salvatore Corleone, stir in me some deeply visceral reactions which are best reserved for my Just Joseph channel. However, recent postings by the Archbishop on the X platform formerly known as Twitter have blatantly promoted the pre-Vatican II liturgy and cry out for me to vociferously push back on this platform. On July 16th, Archbishop Corleone quote reposted an open letter from the Americas to Pope Francis signed by a roster of people alleged to be distinguished British artists, business leaders, composers, human rights activists, mus musicians, and writers for the sole purpose of asking that no further restrictions be placed on the traditional Latin Mass. Regardless of the obsequious language employed by this seriously misinformed document, it is outstanding that any bishop would dare to circulate and promote an open letter addressed to any pope and invite others to add their names to the existing list of signatures. This action would have been unheard of during any previous pontificate, and a bishop who dared to stick his neck out in such a way would be subjected to harsh criticism from his peers. Every bishop who leads a diocese throughout the world has direct access to the Pope. If a bishop has a serious issue to bring to the Holy Father, he could easily address it in a private letter to the Pope. A bishop could certainly engage his brother bishops to join in making the same plea. But enlisting public pressure in the form of an open letter to influence a decision by the Holy See is reprehensible. Before I address the issues detailed in the open letter, let me first provide some historical context surrounding the revision of the liturgy following Vatican II, particularly with regard to the use of the Latin language. First of all, Vatican II did not outlaw the use of Latin. Latin remains the official language of the Roman Rite and the primary language used in publishing approved liturgical texts in the Vatican. The current liturgy could be offered entirely in Latin, and there are liturgical books available to make this possible. However, there has been little call for this among the faithful, and most priests would be ill-prepared, and frankly unwilling, to do this. Many Catholics are unaware that within a few years after the promulgation of the Missal of Pope St. Paul VI, the same Holy Father circulated among bishops throughout the world a document entitled Jubilate Deo, which contained the simplest Latin Gregorian chants for the Mass for use in parishes. In 1979, nine years after the promulgation of the revised Missal, a new Graduale Romanum, the book containing all official Latin chants for the Mass, was published by the Benedictine monks of the Abbey of Saint-Pierre de Salem. 
the Decretum Co Oprobatur, Ordo Cantus Misse, which appears just past the title page, indicates that this massive project was undertaken by the monks of Salem, De Mandato Sumi Pontificis Pauli Sesti, by mandate of the Supreme Pontiff Paul VI. Pope St. Paul VI was most certainly a liturgical reformer but he was also a pope who had broad appreciation of liturgical art and music. He had a deep appreciation of the church's vast treasury of ancient Latin chant and wanted it preserved and kept alive for centuries to come. The Roman gradual was revised according to the post-Vatican II liturgical calendar and the new lectionary. The open letter asserts that placing restrictions on the continued use of the Missal of Pius V is robbing future generations of exposure to the treasury of music composed for liturgical texts written in the Latin language. Given what I have just explained about what took place following the Second Vatican Council, these assertions are patently false. The liturgical reforms were not a referendum on the Latin language or upon any suitable hymn, chant, or motet composed in that language. The reforms were intended to remove from the liturgy many complicated rituals that reflected a time when clergy, particularly bishops, played the role of feudal princes governing people considered to be unworthy, ignorant peasants. The post-Vatican II liturgy re-emphasizes the Mass as a sacred banquet shared by believers who profess a participation in the Paschal Mysteries. The Church, particularly the Pope, has the authority to bind and loosen when it comes to liturgical norms and directives, and bishops, in union with the Holy Father, are responsible for maintaining these norms within their dioceses. This brings me to a glaring misrepresentation made by the open letter, which apparently the Archbishop continues to concur, the role of the local bishop in the regulation of these rites. When the Holy Father issued his motu proprio traditiones custodes, the major issue he addressed was the weakening of the authority of the local bishop in regulating the liturgy, as spelled out in Pope Benedict XVI's Sumorum Pontificum. The predecessor of Pope Francis made it possible for small groups of the faithful and individual priests within a diocese to opt for the use of the 1962 Missale Romanum with little control from the local bishop. In his Traditiones Custodes, Pope Francis, in response to information gleaned from questionnaires circulated among the dioceses of the world, restored control back into the hands of the diocesan bishops. The reason why backward-facing prelates like Salvatore Corleone have not slowed their continued use and promotion of the Pius V Missal is because Traditiones Custodes did not reduce their power in this situation. It is curious why Archbishop Salvatore feels entitled to undermine the authority of bishops in other dioceses. Beginning in the 1980s, during the pontificate of Pope St. John Paul II, priests were directed to limit their more creative impulses and faithfully read the black and do the red. Pope Francis is consistent with Pope St. John Paul II by setting similar limits on priests who independently undermine the norms of the currently approved general instruction of the Roman Missal by choosing to incorporate pre-Vatican II rites and ceremonies into the liturgy. I have repeated many times that the term traditional Latin Mass <laughs> is an erroneous designation for the pre-Vatican II liturgy. The word traditional implies that this form is the standard, which should be perceived as superior to the currently approved Missal of Paul VI. The Missal of Pius V originated about 400 years ago, which is barely one quarter of the time the Church has been in existence. 
Against a liturgical history that extends 2,000 years, the Pius V Missal hardly qualifies as traditional. Now, to be clear, I am a huge fan of Gregorian Latin chant and 16th century polyphony, which comprised the early music of the Roman Catholic Rite. I once led a very successful four-person scola that sang this music for an English Vatican II Mass in San Francisco from 2006 through 2009. And we were very, very good. You will note that I sing Latin Gregorian chant for the opening and closing titles of this and other videos. I have been doing my part to keep alive this rich treasury of early music composed for Catholic worship. But reliable support for my efforts have been wanting. Sadly, my lovely scola was disbanded because the archdiocese pulled financial support from the place where my group was serving. What people do not understand is that this body of music cannot be adequately produced by a volunteer parish group of singers. It requires trained singers to carry this off, and trained singers, including me, cannot and should not be expected to provide their services for free. When Archbishop Corleone was developing his Benedict XVI Institute here in the Archdiocese, I applied for an open position at the Institute. I did not receive as much as an acknowledgement of my application. Only dead silence. The success of my previous term of service at keeping alive the treasures of the church's Latin liturgical music was completely ignored. The truth is that the preservation of a body of music is not what is at stake here. What Archbishop Corleone and his friends are promoting is the heavily feudal pre-Vatican II Pontifical High Mass with its absurd rituals surrounding vesting the bishop before the Mass, fumbling around with precious, semi-precious, and simplex miters, gloves, and buskins. These guys complain about drag queens grooming children, but can't wait to be decked out in satin, lace, white gloves, and sparkling jeweled miters. This is why I refer to their liturgy as the MAGA Mass, because these folks, especially the bishops involved, want to bring back the days when this nonsense was commonplace in cathedrals, seminaries, and abbeys. The style of church which MAGA Catholics promote parallels the style of government over which MAGA Trumpers salivate. A system of monarchical splendor and power for those who dominate, and subjection of the unwashed, unworthy peasants from whose backs the rich and powerful extract their pounds of flesh. Don't be fooled by their efforts to reclaim beauty for the liturgy. Nothing is more outrageously gaudy and in bad taste than the hundreds of yards of brocade and upholstery fabrics worn by clergy at these outdated medieval cosplays. Their MAGA liturgies have little to do with bringing people to Christ, who is their healing Lord and Savior and everything to do with dominance and power. It is disgraceful that an archbishop who takes an oath to teach and act in union with the Pope should involve himself in efforts that clearly are in opposition to the Holy Father's mission of inclusion and mercy. Thank you for watching. Peace be with you. Oh,